page, HTML. Now you could choose PHP if you wanted to, or um, you know you could use. There's so many different things here, but let's for this tutorial we're going to choose HTML as our page type, and in the layout column. Um, I kind of prefer to use, uh, it's a two-column, uh, here it is, this is it. It's a two-column liquid, which means this website's going to expand and contract to fit the viewer's screen. Um, it has a left sidebar, which is also a, a bar for your menu, your news, and so forth and so on. It has a header where you welcome your visitors, you put your logos and, and any important information. And then it has your foot where you usually put your copyright and another, you know, <clears throat> maybe links out, so forth and so on. So you could choose whichever you'd like here. But if you'd like to follow along with this video tutorial, please choose two column liquid, left side, sidebar, header, and footer. Over here in the fourth column, you're going to see that it, tell, it shows you the picture, the preview of what you want to use. And it's going to tell you the doc type and the layout. The doc type is asking you what kind of doc type do you want to use for this website. Dreamweaver is pretty fair with picking the proper doc type for your website. So if you know how to choose proper doc types, then go ahead, go get in there and uh, choose the doc type that you want. Um, but I would say your best bet is to use XHTML 1.0 tr tr uh, transitional. Now the layout CSS, here's a little bit of uh, confusion and it's important that I go over for these for the newbies. <clears throat> you could actually have your style sheet included uh, into your head section of your website. Okay? This is not anybody won't will not see this when they're viewing your web page. Or you could attach the CSS file as a link to the head of your website. Now, when learning CSS code, this is the important part, when you're learning how to manipulate CSS code within a web page, I say keep it to the head, to the head of your web page. It makes it easier for you to manipulate um, your settings that way. Because once you attach it, What's going to happen is inside Dreamweaver, you're going to end up having to work with two files at once. You're going to have to work with your HTML file and the CSS file. It's just easier to learn while it's to added to the head of your uh, page. So we're going to make sure for this tutorial it's set to add the head to page. And then all you need to do is hit create. You're going to see that Dreamweaver gives you a basically a no frills, you know, website, which are, which is right in front of you. But behind the scenes of this website, it, it's very, it's it, it gets a little advanced. So it's nice that they give this to you. But there's a lot of things that we need to do to get this template to our liking. Um, and this is again just get, we're just going to go over the basics, but before we do anything, and this is the number one rule when using Dreamweaver, or I would say any HTML editor, when you're using a template such as this one that we've chosen, is to save your page immediately. Do not go in and make any changes to that web page. You save it to your uh, root folder first. So you're going to go File, Save As, and you'll locate your CSS folder. And I've already have an index. I was already uh, testing before. So mine's going to say to overwrite. But what you would want to do is type in index.html and then hit save. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to go over to your right column in your Dreamweaver and click on the files area. Hit the carrot and you're going to see a drop down box. Right here above is the different areas of your website and it will list some of your uh, websites that you set up with Dreamweaver. So I'm going to click the CSS site, and then right away it's going to show me that the site CSS is there. If I hit the, draw, uh, the plus sign, it's going to show me that my images folder is there, the index that we just uh, saved is there, and then of course I have another file here which you won't have in your folder. That was just actually, it was this one. That's all it was. That's what I use for my tutorials. So this is where we'll see 
all of our files for this specific website. So I'm going to close that up actually. Now up here we have our CSS uh, panel. And if we hit the carrot down, we're going to see currently it's showing a summary for the selection, the rules for that selection, and the properties for that area. Okay, for let me give you an example right now. Here is the header area of this web page. If I move my cursor there and I click, it's going to put a highlighting box around the header and it's going to say summary for the selection, rules for, it's going to show the container and the header, and then it's going to show us the rules and properties for this header. Now let me explain something to you real quick. When you're working with this type of a web page, we have what's called our body, which is the main, the entire area. Then what we have, I'm going to click outside here, and I'm going to select everything in this page. We have our container. This is the container that contains our header, our sidebar, our main content, and our footer. So before, when I was simply just selecting the header, it was simply showing me in the rules that inside my container is the header. There's a header there. So if I clicked on the header, it's going to show me the properties for header, which are has a background of DDD, which is this gray color. And it's telling me I have a padding for the left and the right of a 10 pixels, and my top and bottom at zero. So Let's just go ahead and let me give you one little example here. You can clearly see right now that it's showing us the, for the current selection that we're inside the container, in the header, and our header properties. I'm going to go ahead and click on the sidebar. Again, it's going to show us a summary for the current selection. It's going to show us the rules. So it's saying, okay, we're inside the container put uh, the container, the sidebar that's inside the container, and here's the properties for the sidebar. The sidebar background currently has the EB, EB background color, telling the sidebar to float left and have a padding of 15 and 0, and the width of our sidebar to be 24%. 24% of what? That's the question. Is it 24% of 100%? Is it 24% of 80%? What is it? Well, to find out what percentage of that is, we click on our container. And our container has a width of 80%. What this means, um, I could show you, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this in Firefox. Okay, now I have to kind of size this down a little bit so that you can see it. All right, you'll see here that this is our actual container. And on the sides, we have some extra room here. Our container is set to 80% of this 100%. Okay, so from the edge of this gray area to the edge of this gray area is 100%. From here to here is 80%. Let's say you wanted not to have any gray sides. The best thing to do is to go and you will hit this. You will edit this, which you click on the width, which will highlight down below in the containers area, and you would hit in 100%. But there's going to be a problem. So watch. Take note right now that we have a uh, a scroll bar going from side to side when I set that to 100%. So I'm going to go back and edit undo. I lost the scroll bar. There is mathematics when it comes to working with CSS and percentages and I will tell you why. When I set this to be 100% I got a scroll bar at the bottom which means in most cases you'll get a scroll bar uh, for your viewers will have a scroll bar and we don't want that. So we need to find out why, when I set that to 100%, we are getting a scroll bar. Well, the culprit would be right here, the border for this air, actual area. It's one pixel wide. And so if we actually typed in 100, what's going